This is a test. For the next 60 seconds, this station will conduct a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. Yeah, now that I've started recording, this seems like a very messy idea for a video. Basically, I'm just talking about all the microphones I own. Well, okay. A lot of things have microphones in them, so... No. I guess I mean good mics, but... iPhone audio, does it sound crappy in this room? And what about the mics on this task cam? What can they do? Man, I really didn't think this out. That's way too broad. Who wants to watch 40 minutes of comparing things to other things? So I guess I'm just going to compare my traditional mics that are mics and nothing else. Like what I'm doing right now. I'm literally doing the tests and I haven't introduced them yet. How renegade. But I mean my concept for this video is kind of unwieldy. I've got five mics and four of them are $100 each. I could do a video comparing $100 mics like I did with my headphones video. But these mics are so different from each other, it's not like you would be picking one or the other. Plus I've got a $500 mic that's even more not the same. It's like I'm just trying to make a video for myself rather than come up with an idea that people might actually search for. Maybe it'll turn out okay as long as this video is about microphones and nothing else. Whatever, can't stop now. Clearly if I wanted to succeed, I'd be making more videos about drawing tablets, so here we go. By the way, none of this audio is being processed now. It's just volume balance from clip to clip, so everything's being compared at the same volume. I guess this is just a way of getting to know my mics better. For dialogue. I know, it's weird. I didn't buy this AKG for recording my voice. But I'm still testing it. Like how close can I get into combat room reverb? Or background noise? In some situations, you can barely tell the difference between them when comparing them. But then there are other times when some mics are way more convenient to use than others. Like which one deals with a reverby room the best up close? I don't think any of them are gonna do very good far away, but this is how reverby this room is. Anyways, let's go over the mics one by one. First of all, we got the Audio-Technica AT2020, and I'm using it right now. And right away, I'm gonna point out why I can't just put my face right in front of it, because if you wanna get really close to it, you gotta use this P-pop filter so you don't plosively pop, plosively plop, or whatever, plosively plop wind, so you don't plosively pop wind into it. The diaphragm. The diaphragm. I think it's the diaphragm. I don't know. Well, I'll cut it. If it's not the diaphragm, I'll, I'll cut it. So yeah, if I were to just like put my face in front of it like really close, I can get really good audio, but it'd be kind of weird for me to be doing this where every time I'm doing it, I'm just like really like up into this mic, like looking around it, trying to <laughs> looking like this. Do I want to do that? I don't know. I don't really want to do that. Even the way I have this set up, you know, it's a vanity shot. Ordinarily, I probably put it center, but I got to show all my other mics and I need to actually get audio from this. And so I wanted to be offset to go like this. And yeah, a lot of times I have audio issues because of vanity. Like I'm just like making shots that look good. And I think I'm close enough right now. So I don't think I'm going to have that many issues. And I got myself surrounded with all this like chair, pillows, bears. Why are there bears in this room? Because this is my kitchen. And there's always bears in my kitchen. This is the bears were already in here. I didn't move the bears in here. So you think about how effective it is that I just like move this random stuff in front of me where it seems like this is my audience. Look at this foam. This isn't exactly the same foam, but it's close enough. And you think about how dense this is and then how dense all this stuff is. And by comparison, like you need a lot of this to get the same sound dampening this. And I'll do things where I'll do like a patch you know, oh, I'm not gonna move the bears or whatever random thing that I decided to use to just like help me in the moment. And you can tell the difference. Reverb is very prevalent in reflective places like this. So this is my default indoor mic and voiceover mic. This has a fairly flat frequency response of 20 to 20,000 hertz and it has a little bit of a dip before 100 hertz and kind of goes up a little around 8,000. It always kind of felt like it didn't have that same, you get in close and you get that booming announcer voice as some other mics. And then in terms of its polar pattern, it's pretty 
like pretty much like if you're here, you should be good. But I have had times where it has felt kind of off axis to me. Polar pattern, off axis, what's that about? So I have a video that explains how to read visual audio information in the links, but this is the first time we've come across the polar pattern chart. Now that I think about it, I could have just made a video called how to read a polar pattern chart. Man, that would have been so much better. So at first glance, you might think that this is the head of a mic as seen from above, but it's not. Whatever is considered the front of the mic is at zero degrees and 180 degrees is the back. Just to keep it simple, I'm using the same four frequencies for every mic. So blue is bass, green is mids, yellow is treble, and red is high pitch sibilance. Each of the gray circles represents five decibels of gain or whatever. To hear how loud that is, this is a 1K tone starting at an amplitude of negative 15 dB and I'm dropping it in steps of 5 dB every second. For the AT2020, you can see it uniformly tapers back as you get to 90 degrees. Mids are losing gain faster than bass and sibilance, so if you end up recording off axis, you can reference your mic's polar pattern chart to boost those mids 2 or 3 dB to compensate for that. But once you get past 90 degrees, it's more about what's getting canceled out, so it's not like you can record from behind the mic and just EQ compensate to make it sound like you're in front of it. There are different kinds of mics that range from totally open in all directions to super focused in one direction. Yeah, why didn't I make a video explaining all of that? I think this video is caught between trying to be general education and product comparison, and I'm doing nothing to resolve it. When this is all done, I'm gonna have to take a long, hard look in here. Ready the scalpel? Those are scissors. Okay, number two is the Shure SM58, a classic mic that I never use for any of my videos. And maybe I'm missing out. So this is the kind of mic that needs to be right in front of you, and that's part of the reason I never use it, because I'm always trying to hide my mic. But it's meant to reject undesirable frequencies and also reject like a stage monitor where the sound may be coming up so it has a real good rejection this way. Okay, so I'm doing this voiceover with the SM58 because that makes sense, right? These mics are usually used for live performances because they're durable. The polar pattern shows that it loses high frequencies as it goes off axis and bass is the least affected. Listen to that. Now we're off axis 90 degrees and now we're on axis. Also, I'm like right in front of it right now. Like, ugh, I don't know, like two or three inches. Hi, sweet. Hot tip, let me make sure I'm recording. Oh my God, that would be so stupid if I wasn't. <laughs> Hot tip, don't set up your PA behind your performers, otherwise we'll just create a feedback loop of the mics hearing themselves in the speakers to infinity. So now I'm a foot away. How does this mic sound when I'm a foot away? It has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 15,000 hertz, so this mic is missing out on some of the range of human hearing. In certain cases, you might not want those frequencies. You might be low pass, high passing those frequencies out anyways. And things that were better about this mic versus this one was that sometimes you're recording an amp and there's like vibrations and all these unwanted frequencies and they're just not there when you're recording with these mics. So if you're recording a guitar, there's a certain frequency range that you're probably not gonna miss out on if you're using a more limited mic. Sometimes you don't want those frequencies. So the Audio-Technica is a condenser mic. It is a more sensitive mic. This is a cardioid dynamic microphone. And as a result, this is a more durable mic, and that is a more fragile mic. That is part of the reason why a lot of people like to use this for live, because it's not a sure SM58. If it hasn't been dropped a few times and there's a little indents on its screen, that's just the way these mics are. They get dropped a lot. You step on the cord and it goes bam, down to cement. And it's always on cement. You're always on cement when you step on the cord and you just go pfft, whoops. Number three, I don't know if I should leave these out here. I definitely don't want to do this. I feel like this is going to fall down. Do I want to leave that? Does that even look good? I can't see my shot because I need to use my iPad to reference. But number three is the Shure SM57. The same mic, just with like an extra like 10 hertz lower response. This is how it sounds. Again, I'm four inches away and this is gain boosted a foot away. The main reason I'd use it is because it's more directional. Ready, we're going to do it. Not as much as I would have thought. It affects high frequencies even more than the SM58. 
seems to be a little bit of a, when you do it on the side, there's kind of like a wind thing happening, but we're back to 90 degrees now. For bass frequencies, it's a couple dB less at most off axis. So it's basically the same mic as the 58 with an extra 10 hertz lower response. So 40 hertz to 15,000 hertz. Here are the two overlapping. There's only a few dB plus or minus between the two at any given frequency except for the extra low end. 40 hertz is like going from sub bass to bass frequencies, like bass guitar. So, you know, this is a good bass guitar mic and also the way it kind of rejects some of the higher stuff, you can reject some of the rattle that is inherent to when you're recording bass. Okay, so up until this point, all my mics have been exactly $100. What a coincidence. My next mic is my most expensive mic and is more expensive than all those mics combined. It is the Rode NTG5, and in all my videos, this is how it has been seen in the Zeppelin, which I got on eBay because <laughs> it's cheaper. It's a pretty simple thing. Save some money, get your Zeppelin on eBay. Uh, I don't remember how much I paid for it. When you have a shotgun mic, is very worth it. It's like, why cut the corners when you've put so much investment into a good mic? Yeah, so I keep this in here all the time because it just protects it and it makes it so I don't have to switch it around. This is what it comes with. And it also comes with like a little foam thing and a little uh, fuzzy thing. I have not really noticed it an issue to like just be using this. You know, you got control over your tilt and you can slide it forward and backwards so you can go like this. So this is the actual mic that I have been hiding in this Zeppelin for however long. Let's make that aesthetic. These both have the, uh, whatever they are, Rycote shock mounts. There's really no reason to use this other than like as a backup. And maybe if I was having issues with this, this very thin cable between here, uh, I don't know why they make it so thin, but I'm sure it has something to do with shock absorption. This is the actual mic. Way smaller than you would think <laughs> it would be given this thing. And super light. It has been a long time since I have held this in my hand. I forgot how light this is. So the whole reason I got this is because it is shorter for its off axis rejection than what you would normally experience with a shotgun mic. Usually to get this kind of off axis rejection, usually have longer shotgun mics. Really, I just wanted a small mic that I would be able to take around with me and I wouldn't be burdened by it. Like I wanted to use it. And in the beginning, this is the only mic I used. I started doing voiceovers later, but this was really like, I could feel the upgrade and I was really pushing this thing to its maximum potential. Like I was really kind of kind of cocky in the beginning. My first video was driving while talking, just like, yeah, let's pick a really hard situation and really push this mic. Here we go, getting audio from the NTG5, no Zeppelin out in the raw. Ready, we're backed up and we're, we're a little further away. Highly directional, obviously, it's a shotgun mic. Some mics are more natural when it comes to picking up off-axis sound. Did you hear that? I'm talking at 90 degrees from center and now I'm moving back. Yeah, you can see an extreme pinching of high frequencies, but compared to the other mics, everything is more reduced at 90 degrees. Because it really isn't like gonna totally eliminate it. The whole thing is you want it to be what you're pointing at and you're basically saying that other things aren't a priority. This is a frequency response of 20 to 20,000 hertz. That's the same as the Audio-Technica, and look at that smooth graph. I've heard that shotgun mics aren't good in reverb situations. You know, seventh grade, it was common knowledge that Mountain Dew lowers your sperm count, and you better stay away from Mountain Dew. It's like, hello, 13-year-olds, you don't want babies, drink your Mountain Dew. That's the point I'm trying to make, is that Mountain Dew is an excellent birth control, and shotgun mics are not good for indoor reverb situations. Okay, so my point is, don't, don't just believe random things you read on the internet. Test them for yourself, have your own log, or at the very least, like, listen to somebody's tests. Like, don't just, like, read a post where somebody's like, yeah, yeah, don't do that. It's like, your words are not valid. You give me a video with audio, and then I'll trust you. It's like having a toolbox is like an arsenal of mics and just kind of knowing each one rather than guessing which is going to work. I don't like making my $500 mic stand up like that, but I'm going to be very careful for my last mic. My last mic is the AKG P170. It is a condenser microphone like this Audio-Technica. I don't know, this, this is the Rode condenser microphone. These are both Phantom Power mics. This is a Phantom Power mic. It is kind of like the Shure in that it is a sort of a limited directional. I bought it for recording drums for 
snares so I can isolate the snare from the hi-hat. This one is also 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. If that graph doesn't say use me to record your snare, I don't know what does. By the way, mandatory P-pop filter on this one. I'm taking away the P-pop filter right now. This is what it sounds P-popping. That's just me casually breathing. That's how it sounds. And I'm gonna do a backup. I'm gonna boost the gain and then be a foot away. So this is what it sounds like a foot away. Maybe this mic I can get away with a foot away. So the idea that I'd casually use this up close in a shot is unlikely. Anyways, hey, do you wanna see all the audio profiles stacked on top of each other? Look at that, just absorb that in. Or get your Kodak Easy Chair so you can take a picture of the screen. This polar pattern is really natural looking, let's test it. So I'm moving to 90 degrees. Should only be losing out on super high frequencies and now I'm moving back to zero. Okay, and we're done. Was that a good lesson on how the concept of a video could get away from me? I mean, testing microphones? Was I supposed to write a conclusion? Anything to add, baby? The broadcasters of your area, in voluntary cooperation with the FCC and all the authorities, have developed this system to keep you informed in the event of an emergency. If this had been an actual emergency, you would have been instructed where to tune in your area for news and official information. This concludes this test. <laughs>